Hey everybody, welcome to Lounge TV. I'm Tom, and I am here today because this is going to be something just a little bit different. Normally it's Dad showing you how to put something together. Today it's going to be me. I'm building my brand new PC. I got all the parts, they're all in, and today's the day that I'm finally putting it together. Those of you who don't know, I started uh, streaming a little while back, and uh, I first started off trying to stream Elden Ring. Uh, that made it very, very obvious that I needed to upgrade my PC in order to actually stream games properly. It, uh, was not having a fun time. Which makes sense. My old PC is about five years old, and, I mean, some parts of it are actually ten years old, like the power supply and the case itself. It's, it's about time that I give it the old, uh, it's about time I let that PC rest and I get a new PC up and running. So, that's what I've been doing. I've got all the parts for it, which I'm going to showcase pretty much all of them, and I will take you through some of the steps on putting the whole thing together, and you'll get to see the finished product, and you'll probably only really get to see this, how, the P, how the PC works when I actually go live, so when you want to see me play any games, check out my Twitch channel. Down in the description there's a link to it, and on Match Sock, you'll see my glorious visage next to a sock as a profile picture, so you, that way you know it's me. Alright, so, without further ado, I, got, I have got a lot of boxes. My... that lamp, I don't know what's up with it. I swear it just turned off and on again. Anyway, just to show real quick, there's not too much room in my room anymore because uh, of changing it for the stream setup, and also look at all these boxes! They're all full of computer parts! That's the sound of it snapping into the tripod. I know it's not something you normally hear, but... Yeah, soon enough, all those boxes, everything in them is going to be condensed into one singular unit. It's going to work. It's going to be a beautiful computer. And I can't wait. Let's get started. First things first... So, first things first, you're going to want to prep your workspace. As you can see, I have cleared off my entire desk. Even over here. Got myself tools for the job, which luckily when it comes to assembling a computer, you don't typically need too much. So I got a tiny set of, or rather a set of tiny screwdrivers, which I think is older than I am. And another screwdriver that just will, is a bit easier to get going. Have it set on paper towel for no real reason, to be honest. Dust it off the workspace, don't want dust to get into a brand new PC. That would not be good. And yeah, so, we are set. Let me actually go grab the first, possibly one of the most crucial components. Actually, I'll get that ready in just a moment. The first thing, and possibly one of the most important things, is in this box. What I've got here is a Leon Lee uh, 011 Dynamic Case. I, I really did a lot of research when it came to building this PC, and uh, this seemed like the best case that I had wanted. It, plus, I wanted to go with a built, little bit more of an aesthetic build this time, since the past two ones were kind of boring. I didn't really do much in terms of customization on the inside, but this time I want to go with just a little bit extra. I think it'll look nice. So, without further ado, let me... Let's remove this box and then get the thing out and up on the desk so that you all can see it. Hope you enjoy the journey of building your PC. Alright. Actually, let me... Hey, how you doing? I know that you can't see it all that well. Let me... This is what it looks like still in the box. Get it on out of here somehow. Now I do still want to be careful with this because even though I'm sure that it's okay. Let's be smart about this. Lifting it straight up ain't gonna happen. So, I'm not just gonna flip it upside down. Now 
Nobody ever said this is easy and I don't exactly have a ton of room. There we go, okay. It's easier if I had somebody else helping me. So, as I said on the announcement video that we did on Lounge TV a little bit ago, this is the first time that I will be assembling a PC all on my own. Not that I have necessarily needed the help, but I have appreciated the help from those who have helped me in the past. And it also makes stuff like this a lot easier because then I have somebody who can, you know, grab the other side of the box while the other person pulls the rest of it out. This should be the most difficult thing to unpack, I would presume. If it isn't, I will honestly be surprised. There we go. Okay. Do we have a cat that needs a box? <laughs> All right. Get this foam off and out of here. That's the front of it. All right, let's bring this back around now that I've got the really good to the camera. Let's see, right about there. Okay. Bag off of it. And boom. Hi. Right. So this is it. This is gonna be the case. Now I need to figure out how to open it, and then we can start looking at other stuff. I am the light is way overexposed on this side. <sighs> Much better. So yeah, I'll get this thing open and then start the building. So as you can see, I've gotten the panels off of the case. Um, pretty simple. Just has some sliding portions. Uh, there's two screws that just act as like a little lock thing sort of deal. that go on the uh, top and back of it. They help to keep everything in place. And uh, while looking around and taking the panels off, I discovered a mystery box. This mystery box contains what I can only presume are supposed to be like cable ties, which are just Velcro. Uh, this is a rounded to hold it in place, but uh, I mean, it's a twist tie. That could still be useful for something. A whole bunch of screws. A little rubber block that just reads double coated tissue tape. So I don't quite know what's up with this thing. I'm presuming that it'll be with the instructions which were in here. And I've been looking over that, so familiarizing myself with the entire case itself. I don't know if I will be able to continue installing it while laying it down or if I'm going to need to stand it up. This case is a little wider than I thought it would be, but that's not a big deal. I still have to decide exactly where I'm going to put it, because my old tower is directly down under my desk right here, but also has like a cover over it so I don't like accidentally, like it has like a little door on it that covers the power button so I don't accidentally like kick it. I still need to figure out exactly where it's going to be the best spot for it so that it can still eject hot air without... Uh, just being directly in the middle of my desk if I wanted it on top, because I think I might, but I'm also going to have to check with the streaming setup because extra light from the RGB that's going to be in this thing on my desk might affect the color balance. I don't know. I'll have to figure that out. It might be a case of, like, I have it set to colors I want on some days, and then on the stream days I change it to just, like, plain, like, white light. I'll figure that out. In the meanwhile... I'm gonna breeze through the instructions, make sure that I know well enough everything that I'm doing, and then I can start with other stuff. So that's the power button. And before I forget, just to also kind of illustrate how old my other PC was, this is a VGA cable. My 
my graphics card's a 1070, it's still allowed for these, and uh, the monitors I have, one of them actually is 10 years old by now, and the other one I got five years later, but uh, it was kind of difficult to actually find. But yeah, VGA cables. As I found out when researching for this PC, they don't really exist anymore. They've now moved to display port cables. I had no idea. Because, you know, at the time I wasn't looking for new stuff, so I wasn't keeping up with the tech. Just goes to show, things will always change on you. You gotta keep an eye on them. And now, like, I won't be getting rid of my old PC, but I have, um, unless I ever use it again, I have really no use for this at all. Oh well. Into the box of wires it goes. The box wasn't there. Alright, we got the case standing back up again, because first off we are going to be installing as per the instructions, which I left right up here. So the first thing, if I hold them the correct way and not upside down, is to first take off the stuff that's off of this that is necessary, such as the top panel and the side and front glass that has already been done. Uh, so the first thing that it states, and I know I don't have to go in order, but I'm going to go in order, is power supply installation, in which it shows to take the panel off that was right here. There used to be a panel like in front of this. I have already removed that. In fact, that is right here. So see, like this was up here. And it does say to remove the protective film on the glass. I will worry about that later. That's usually the satisfying thing that you do last. Uh, ooh, where is the... I'll leave this. Now see, the... There's a major downside to having a dark colored desk and working on dark colored computer equipment. Especially things that have small parts, such as a small... Like tiny little screws. Look how small they are. And that's, I don't really want to open this because that's uh, kind of scary. I don't want to lose anything. Because anything goes on that side of my desk, it goes between that and the wall. And that is not good. But I digress. So, first of all, let's get the power supply here out of its box. I got a Corsair HX1000. Ultra low noise. 1000 watts because the power needed for this is a lot. I have myself a letter opener that I believe I got from my great-grandmother. Great and it's uh, very useful for opening packages because it actually bent a little bit at the end. You can't really see it from here, but like, and a really like sharp hook at the end of it. So like it like grabs on a tape and just like, just rips right through it. It's a very useful thing. It's not too dissimilar to that uh, box cutter. Ooh, smell of new electronics. One that uh, can't really be beat. Get rid of that plastic. I'll not get rid of it. Oh, no, get rid of it. Okay, now let's see. Which way does this thing open? 80 plus platinum certified. There we go. Okay. I think I might have this sideways. And behold, for it is stuck. For it is a box inside of a box. Anything really to know about this? Nope. I'll just keep this to the side. Okay. This opens via... That's a lovely sound. All right. Can you say excessive packaging? Because I know I can. Oh, 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 okay. Uh, so I also need to... Hold on. How does this open? Am I... am I stupid? No, I'm not stupid. Oh, duh. There's a sticker blocking it. There we go. Okay, now let's carefully set this back down. And now we open. 
And I'm assuming that this is all the cables. Oh yeah, that's a lot of cables. All right, let's set that to the side. Okay, here is the, oh, this is like a really nice like rubber cord. Got a ground to it and everything. I don't think that my old PC had that. It's very really good. Uh, ooh, and it even comes with some cable management. As well as a desiccant, silica gel. Don't need it. And here it is, the device. It's got a lot of plugs. Look at that. All right. Sound operation at low to moderate loads. In this mode, the fan will not spin. Okay, well, here's the power supply. I am going to, hold on. I probably shouldn't have it be sitting like that. Uh, there should be an instructional thing. Here it is. Ooh, this is thick. Painfully thick. All right, so we got the power supply all set up in here. Got that nice fan on it. It's, yeah. So I'm going to be figuring out everything about this and soon enough I shall be able to install this, I think. Yeah, yeah, I should. What am I talking about? Of course it will. I, I know I specifically looked up like, hey, does everything fit in this case? And the answer is yes. It's a pretty loud switch. Fortunately, I am a genius. All those tiny little screws can just go right in the lid of the little screwdriver set. So they're all just right here. I don't have to worry about losing them. Now, on that note, I know how to install this now and I know where I'm gonna be putting it. It's gonna be right in this component right down here. As it turns out, I didn't need to take the panel off up here, but I'll still be using that for my solid state drives, which is funny because the instructions for this only talk about hard disk drives, but I'm assuming that that's just because uh, hard disk drives are always thicker than solid states. Ironically, thicker isn't better. <laughs> anyway, so we want to install this right down here. Oh no, okay, uh, okay, let's, let's take a moment and set everything up properly so that I can get to this. There we go. Okay, now this is the screw on the front plates first with C screws. So I need four of these. One, two, three, are these right? Uh, that's not right. What the sea screws look like again? And those are kind of like hollowed out in the middle a little bit. Okay. So there are exactly four of these to mount the PSU, the power supply. Uh, let's see, I found two of them. Where are the, where are the last two? This one? Yes. Okay. And we need the one more. There it is. All right. Now, first of all, will this work? It will, haha, -ha. okay. Now, usually when you do these things, you want to install screws in an X pattern. Just need to... There's another point where it would be very beneficial to have a second person to hold stuff in place. But perhaps I don't actually need it. So we are going to start with the one up here. Don't want to screw it all the way in. You want to just get started. X pattern, remember. All right. Now we'll go with the one above it. And the last one. 
It's exactly what you don't want to happen, but luckily, as long as you keep track of it and you don't lose it, everything will be fine. Okay. Now you've got those in. Maybe I'll just do that in little X shape. And once I have that in, I will uh, then figure out what the heck to do with all the cables, because I should hook those up, at least mostly, and get that good to go. So I'll come back when we're on to the next thing, which should be either installing the motherboard or the solid states. Let's hook the motherboard. That motherboard will be simple enough. So I'll finish up with the uh, power supply and then I'll be right back. All right, the power source is installed. Next up is the motherboard, which I've got myself the Z690 Carbon Wi-Fi from MSI. So my previous motherboard on the PC that's still hooked up down there was MSI, so I have faith in uh, their products, and uh, this just looks like an overall upgrade from what I found. So let's see. tech meets aesthetic. Let's see what we got. We've got a box. I had to guess this probably has cables. And it looks to be a yes. Alright, we'll put those to the side for now. I tell you, this desk is gonna be a mess by the time I'm done with this. Now for the motherboard itself. Whew, this motherboard's got a little bit of weight to it. Ah, there's the rest of the stuff I'll need, like wires. We'll leave that over there on the side right now. All right, just give me one quick second to full cardboard. Now this is the part that's a little spooky because motherboards can be very uh, um, tricky, let's say. So let's see, it's okay open it on that side. All right, we're gonna set this down for now. Now one thing important for building PCs that I learned from somebody who uh, told me to be, uh, build the first PC. He's uh, in the biz, so to say. Static electricity, very bad. The nice thing about cases, if you got one hand on it, static electricity just flows right out of you. Just grounds you. It's completely fine and you're good to go. I don't know if this is the case for every case, but I know that the case I had is the same and this case is probably the same too because this seems like it's pretty dang good quality. All right, so let's see. To mount this, about the motherboard, I will need the A and B components, which there's three of those. It's really just spares if I need them. Because most of the B components are pretty much all in there already. But I need to put in the A components. Let's see how exactly many are there. Let's see, there's three down there. Uh, two higher. Uh, well, that looks a little bit different, but I think it's I think it's fine. I'm I'm sure it's fine. I'm you know it's, it's probably okay. You know the diagrams don't have to line up 100 percent. Anyway, Whew. all right. Let's get the Conductive grid bag. Okay, so this bag is designed specifically to ensure a yeah, static sensitive device. All right. Pretty much I want to be in contact with the case at all times so that I do not accidentally generate even a slight amount of static. Let's put that bag there for now. First, let me show off. There it is, the ZX90. It's got an onboard Wi-Fi chip. So, you know, that's cool. All right, so now, I'm going to want to take the plastic off of the back part of it now, 
Just because otherwise it's going to get stuck in there and I'm not going to take it out later. I'll remove the plastic from the other portions later. For now, let's line this up. Okay, there we go. Yep, you can see through the, uh, the holes that you know you're going to have to screw through that uh, you can see the little uh, little mounting bits in there that you can uh, then go through and screw those in. So let's see this and let's see the A screws look ah they're the ones that I had confused previously. So I don't even know will you be able to see that, but that's what nah you can't really see it. Just take my word for it. <laughs> All right, now. Oh, that doesn't, that doesn't quite feel right. <clears throat> right let's, let's try on this one, because this one is nice and further out. Okay, this one's screwing in like I would expect. Remember, you don't want to screw it in all the way, right away. Another A. Oh, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned it at first, but I did take off one of the back panels because it was obstructing my ability to get to the power supply uh, wires that I will uh, be needing to get to later. Speaking of which, actually, how much is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve. Wait a minute, hold on. Where, where is the power for this? There's eight up there. No, 12, 24, duh. <laughs> Multiplication. All right. Now, kind of like going the same X shape pattern. Just put it in enough to secure it and then continue to screw in all the rest of them. And you just want to do that for, in this motherboard's case, all nine screws. I'll remove the plastic on some of these pieces later. We're getting there. It's definitely a slow process, but you know, we've already got the PSU in, the power supply, motherboard's going in. We're getting there. So the next thing that I'm gonna be doing is the installation of the processor. Da da da. This is the one that I got, the Intel i9 12900KF. There is a K variant, but that that doesn't have the F, but that variant, the only difference is just that it has an onboard graphics drive. I'm not going to need that, so I'm not worried about it. Now, I haven't actually hooked up any of the uh, wires and like power stuff yet, just because I don't need to at this very moment. Uh, actually, I take that back. I am going to... I won't put in any of the uh, stuff in regards to the... Okay, never mind. I actually will do that later because I want to do at least a little bit of cable management this time and not it have it be an absolute tangle like it was the first time. Also, I need to be very careful when talking. I don't want to spit on the motherboard. That would be bad. So I'm just going to just be like this until I'm ready to actually put the processor in, which let me actually open this thing so that I can get started. I've got the uh, instructions right here. This is a fairly standard thing for most, if not all. Wow, this is a tough sticker. No, eh, don't do that. Okay, it probably will be easier to actually just peel it off at this point. Because <laughs> a letter opener just ain't literally cutting it. Short fingernails, I can't get a grip on it. There we go, okay. And here it is. Now, I know that this processor has a bit of a reputation for running extremely hot. So, despite this, it's also a processor that works very, very, very well.
that there. Yep, okay. So the processor installation. Yes, so first things first, we have to. Uh, let's see. That which releases that. Flip this up. Okay, now there should be. Let's see. So the little triangle, because all processors have this little uh, triangle symbol on their top right. Or at least this processor does. Hello? You, you want it? Okay, that's why. Whew, okay. This is, uh, this is very delicate work. So let's see, the little triangle. Okay, there's a the triangle. So all diagrams have shown that that little triangle has to go in the corner up here. I don't see any like marking that shows that, like, hey, that's what you're supposed to do. Does it have it like on here? It does. Okay. So on the outside of the uh, case for this, you can see that there is a little triangle. I, you probably can't see it from there. Hold on. Let, let me let's see if I can zoom in and give you anything of a better view. I cannot. Okay. So you're just going to have to take my word for it. There's a little triangle here in the top right corner. You want to align that with the triangle that is on the processor. So the triangle's on that corner. And overall, the installation of this is uh, rather simple. You just gotta pinch the two sides, align the triangle with the thing, and just uh, slot it in. At which point then you can yeah, let me just make sure because, you know, the, the processor is, you know, very crucial. And practically everything here is very crucial. So, yeah, open that up, lower that in, line up the corners. Do not, do not touch any of the pins on the underside. Alright, then you want to... Uh, hold on, hold on. Am I missing something? No, I'm, I'm not. Because once you set that down, then you want to put that back in. And then do that. Alright, then you just gotta push this back down, and there. Secured. Alright. Now, there's a little bit more that you're going to have to do with the processor. I hope that is set right. I, I had to set it right. Because it's supposed to be a tight fit. I am paranoid, though. Uh, no, yeah, that, that is set exactly as it's supposed to. Okay. That is all nice and secure. Now, soon enough, I will be applying thermal paste and my CPU cooler to it. However, there are other steps to do first. So yeah, the, that's done. And in fact, actually, I can go and get the next step right now because the next step is the RAM. Yeah, regarding the processor, I'm pretty sure that part of the reason why, because honestly, I don't, I, I think that my old processor for my former PC was like an i7 something. It, it's, it's a five year old processor at this point. Like that's uh, that's old. So what I've got here is Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB DDR5, 32 gigs and two different sticks. Those of you who are in the know might think like DDR5, geez. Yeah, a DDR5 RAM is not as cheap as DDR4 RAM. This is, I'll just say this now. This is not the everyman's build. I'm specifically doing this to A, future-proof, and B, provide good streams. So like, you know, if you're in the market for getting a new PC, maybe you might want to consider not 
getting everything exactly that I'm getting, unless you happen to be an enthusiast or really, really want the same thing. Just word of caution. You know, I'm not disparaging anything that I've got. What I've got is uh, pretty dang good. All things considered. Um, how does this... One thing that I will never figure out is how to open every single type of box. I think this just slides out, actually. And I'll be right back. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't know you were filming. How, you know, how would I know? Well, because I told you I was building a PC. <laughs> you funky. Oops. Yeah. Oops. Oops. I was just going to ask, do you know how long Mom was planning to put the quiche in the uh, oven for before? Oh, I have no idea. Because she asked me to put it in, so... Alright, go back to your job. Yeah. Dang, this oh, thing God. is a pigsty. It's because I got it. Yeah. I'll get the ram in in a second. Now that that distraction is taken care of, the DDR5 Dominator Platinum Corsair RAM. Now, the instructions of this, and this is why it's very important, even if you know exactly what you're doing, unless like, you're, unless, like your day job is assembling computers every day. Like th this is literally the third PC I've ever assembled and the first one that I've ever done solo. I believe I said this already, but I'm saying it again. So I'm making sure that I'm going through instructions and doing things as they are supposed to be done. As in reading the instructions beforehand, making sure that I know what goes where and doing that, not just slapping things together like a certain someone I know does. And see, one of the reasons that's important is that this specifies that you are supposed to start out with, there are, for the RAM slots, there is DIMM, D-I-M-M-A, and D-I-M-M-B. Apparently, according to this, you're supposed to start out with DIMMA2, because there's two slots for each. So DIMMA2, DIMB2, and then I could slot the other two in, because I have four sticks of that RAM. I am making sure, like I said, this thing is this thing is getting future proofed. So that like hopefully I will not need to upgrade or do anything else with it for like well over five years. Unless like stuff advances that much that fast. So anyway, we're going to take the first the first uh, bit of RAM. Make sure that you touch the side. You don't know whenever you might be statically charged. Now let's see. Um, this is actually kind of hard to tell exactly which end is which. So let's see. Dim A two would go in first. Okay. You can sort of line it up with how the pins on it look and where there is, you can see it, there is a small gap in the center, including a gap in the pins. So that's how you can line that up because there's also a visual gap that you can see here. So dim A2, let me just double check, make sure that I always gotta double check the instructions like two or three times while I'm doing things. Cause yeah, okay, dim A2. Uh, actually, there should be a label on this somewhere. Dim A2, which one's which? Dim A2, Dim A2. Ooh, this doesn't actually say. So I was worried about a little bit of dust getting in here. Dust is no good. Um, okay, okay, there's the diagram. So Dim A1, Dim A2, okay. Yeah, so okay, I, I had this right. I very much like to double check and make sure before I do anything, especially with stuff that's as important as this. Slot this in. And you just gotta push until the things on the side click back into place. Okay, there's the first one. Uh, I can get some of this unnecessary junk off from my desk. Alright, so there's the first of the RAM. Now for the second of the RAM. Now when you put the second stick in, 
Joe would have made it that's what she said joke at that. When you put the second stick in, as I repeat myself, you want to put that in dim B2. It even says on the motherboard itself printed on it first with a little forked thing pointing at dim A2 and dim B2. Now for most people, 32 gigs of RAM is probably going to wind up being enough. So, you know, even if you are like looking to get like high-end RAM like DDR5, if you get just two sticks, odds are, unless you do like anything producing videos or streaming or anything of the sort, you're probably not going to need more than that. Just uh, something important to note. Um, yeah, let me, let me put this back. Nah, whatever, I'll deal with it later. This room is just becoming a pile of cardboard. Alright, so I'll get the other two sticks of RAM in. They're going to go in the exact same way. Going to go A, then 2. And then I will move on to what I have to do next, which is probably going to be starting to do some of the pins. Fun. Alright, we got... We got standing up right here, as you can see. Next up, we are going to be putting in the wires for the front panel header, as well as plugging in the uh, power to the motherboard. So, let's see. First off, the power goes into the 24 slots here. Let's get a little bit of extra leeway so that I can actually properly bend this, because this isn't exactly the easiest thing to bend. Uh, let's see, so square in that, okay. We want to see like bending stuff like this always like makes me like go Ugh, because it's like I know that some stuff is okay and some stuff is kind of good. All right, there we go. Now I just have to push that in until it is secure. You can tell it's secure because there's a clip on this side right here, on the side going that way. That once that is over it, over a little uh, plastic lip, you know you're good. Now, I'll just put that like that for now. Mix this up a little bit so it looks a little bit neater. And there. As much as I really do not like when wires start to uh, bend and fold like that. I'm just gonna have to get over it, I guess. All right, now for the different uh, LEDs for the front panel. I've got the instructions right here in front of me, so I know what I am doing. Let's see, so we got HD audio. Uh, we don't need it to really do audio. Like, we don't need the case to do audio. Because my old case used to beep when I turned it on, and actually I, could, I can look through here. <laughs> Hello, I am John PC. I am the computer. Uh, my old computer had a uh, audio thing for this, and honestly, I don't need it. So I am going to actually just wrap this upwards so that I just know that I'm not using it. I will make sure that that is away later. Now, these. Let's see, one of them is for USB, and they're USB 3.0. Very nice. We got power LEDs, uh, HDD LEDs, and power switch. So, let's see, these all go to JFP1. JFP1 is somewhere. Okay, pump fan, important. CPU fan, important. J Rainbow, important, I think. Um, hold on, I know it's somewhere. Can't hide from me forever. I know it's here because I saw it somewhere earlier, and now I can't find it. 
Is that all the bottom? There it is. It's all the way at the bottom. Okay. So, let's see. So I have to connect these in... Oh, this will be easier if this thing's laying down. <laughs> oh, no problem. Let's make sure the wires are going to be uh, compromised. That is not allowed. You're not allowed to slide. It's probably it's probably not good for my desk that I keep sliding this on it, but oh well. Okay, there's one and two. Um, yeah, this doesn't this thing doesn't actually say which one is one and two. Like which one is negative, which one's positive. Well, regardless, I will get this, you know, figured out, hook these all up, and then I will get back to you guys on the next thing, which, uh, what, what is the next thing, anyway? I already installed the motherboard. Ooh, is it graphics card next? Uh, no, I think it's gonna be, uh, hard drives. Regardless, I'll get to it. We got those wires all connected. Let me turn this and show you. They're not rest that on top of a CPU power cord. I need that. As you can see, I got the power cord all set up. I've got the front USBs. I've got the front plate here. As it turns out, there was a diagram on the page that I was on that somehow I just was not looking at. So, you know, you gotta look through everything carefully. Don't just skim over stuff. It's important. So now what I've got here are CPU power cords. I can't really see back here, so I am going to be smart and grab my phone. Let me not accidentally turn on music. Turn my flashlight. There we go. And now I'm back down here again. Let's see. So... Da -da -da -da. Uh, this is a little annoying, ain't it? <laughs> Alright, well. Uh, let me put this down here, point it up like that. That'll work. That way I can actually see things on my end. Now, let's see. One nice thing is that these pins, you can't really see them here. If I... Ah, uh, it's not focusing. So, these pins have different patterns on them. Some of them are what I call shield shaped, and some of them are squares. So it can be easy to match up, just like, okay, look at the pattern. So for this one in particular, it's shield, square, square, shield, square, shield, 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 shield square. I look at the connectors here because nothing's labeled. And this has the same pins. So line that up, slide those in, wait until it clicks. And I'll do the same thing on the other one. And you know what's nice? You can save the twist ties. What's so nice about saving twist ties? Well, because you always need twist ties for something, whether it's like Christmas lights in December, or if it's like, you just need to do something with them. All right, shield, square, square, shield, square, shield, shield, square. Shield, square, square, shield, square, sh yep. Okay. All right. A very resounding, nice sounding click. Now, this case has some convenient little um, non-sus vents that you can push your wires up through. And that way they can more easily reach all the way down the back. So because I'm going to be using this compartment back here for uh, the other thing, let me okay, this be a part where I would want to Velcro these together. In fact, where is one of those? There they are. Cable management. Just 
just uh, hook that up and there. Now these cables are stuck together and I know exactly where they go, I know exactly where they are. Cable management is very good. Now let's see. The unfortunate thing is that putting the big old power cord enforced, enforced and with the uh, way that this hooks up is that unfortunately it's a little backwards, sort of. So I have to like reach behind to do things and start from like the back going forward as opposed to forward going back. Which is a little annoying. I actually can't see with that there. I need to move this up to here. That doesn't help either. Move this here. Uh, the wires are kind of in the way, but that still works. Kind of. Okay. It really does. I lied. Okay, so shield, square, square, shield, square, um, stuff. Oh, I guess these are actually completely reversible. No, no, they aren't. Hold on, hold on, this is shield square, shield square, shield, shield, square, shield, shield, shield. It's very difficult to tell exactly what it is from back here, but it looks to me like, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, I think I have this a little bit backwards. In fact, I definitely have this a little bit backwards, which is strange, I don't know how I did that. No, it can't be backwards. No, don't do that. Just turn off the flashlight. I said turn off. Pardon me. I'll get this figured out, and then the CPU pins will be in. I'll show what that looks like on the messy wire end on the back here. And then we can move on to uh, probably, at that point, the hard drives. This, it's a bit of a puzzle, but it's fun. And now for the part that some of you have probably, have more than likely been excitedly waiting for. To see what graphics card I got. I know what I got, but none of you do. So once I get this done opened, the big reveal shall be revealed. I almost punch myself where I shouldn't. Any guesses? What? Like, just give me a guess. What do you think I got? I'll tell you what I got. I got a 3080 Ti. So yeah, I thought about getting a 3090 because those are available, but uh, for one, way too expensive. For two, 3080 Ti does pretty much everything that a 3090 does right now. Maybe if they release a 3090 Ti, it'll be better, but the 3080 Ti does everything I need. I don't need the extra VRAM. You know, I'm, I'm not crypto mining. And that's pretty, from what I've seen, that's pretty much the only thing it's really used for. All right, let me take a seat. And get this open. There we go. Put this back over here with the tools. Went with the MSI brand because I actually, in this case, picked a little bit of a form over not over function, because they're all 3080s. But uh, there were, I didn't exactly get the cheapest option that was out there, but this went well for the uh, design idea that I had for this PC. Ah, I missed. Uh, and that just being essentially angles. 
All right, let's get this thing open and I can show you guys the graphics card itself. I'm excited about this. I specifically, like I knew what that package was, but I specifically didn't open it just so that I could go through the entire opening process on camera. All right. And big surprise, it's a box in a box. Just kidding, it's an envelope. What is this, like the, yeah, the user's guide. <laughs> Overclocking, that's a funny one. Okay. Put that aside for later. While I overall did not spare much expense, this was still the much more economic option than the actual 3090. Oh, he's a he's a beefy boy. All right, so we got a important mounting bracket. I'm sure that's what that is. All right. That and honestly, I'm kind of a fan of MSI's uh, dragon motif. Sheets, still in the plastic. Let me just oh, thirty eighty Ti. She's a big one. Look at that, three big old fans. All those nice angles. It's gonna have that RGB going. It's gonna be really, really nice. And you know what? Normally, while the fans wouldn't be terribly visible, in the spirit of making it look good, I got a vertical mounting bracket. With this vertical mounting bracket, I will be able to have the fans be pointed out that way, thus showing off the uh, angular of them. I know it's not as like, terribly easy to see me back here, but it's just easier if I go here. Yeah, I got the vertical mounting bracket. I've got the card. Now it's just a matter of setting it all up. You better make sure that I know what I'm doing first, and then we'll get right into that. I'm excited. Like this, this is the big deal. This is this is the thing. 3080 Ti, MSI. So I took a short dinner break. Came back. Um, so here's a uh, life lesson to be learned. Always make sure that you're getting exactly what you need for what you have or what you're getting. Because I got this as the mounting bracket for the wrong case. This is for the XL variant of this case. This is ATX, this is for the XL. So, you know, before you go spending money on things, make sure that they're 100% compatible and you know what you're getting beforehand. It's a very important lesson. It's not that big of a deal, ultimately. I'll just install the graphics card normally, and I'll put in the vertical mounting bracket once I actually get the right one. So. Uh, let's see, what we are going to need to do for this, let's lay this all back on down. Uh, actually, we'll get back to that once I screw in the things that I'd unscrewed before I realized that I had the wrong thing. Yeah, make sure that you know what you're getting before you get it. It's a very, very important lesson. Even though I can't install this how I want to, we're still going to install it anyway. And this came with an extra support bracket, which I will be using because that is a smart thing to do. So, what I'm going to do is, uh, actually, hold on, I didn't do the thing I said I was going to do, so let me go do that first, and then we'll install a graphics card. Alright, you know what they say, third time's a charm. So now I'm going to take the graphics card. It's pretty easy to see exactly how it's supposed to be mounted in. And... I'll let you say you can't get like a really close close up to this, but then just like the RAM, slot it in.
And then for the uh, for the, these things that you take off the back of your computer, you just take a screw out, and then you'll just put that in the uh, bracket onto the case. I think my light just blinked. It's weird when that happens. It really keeps happening more and more. And there, that secures it in place. If you really want to be sure though, uh, over in, and you don't technically have to do this, but you can take one of the others. Actually, no, I don't. Let me not just say things. <laughs> technically, you could use another screw. Honestly, it's probably a good idea to use another one just to kind of make sure that it's completely secure. In addition, I'm going to be also installing an extra bracket, which if I'm not mistaken, I actually need to install over where I just screwed it in. In which case, I would be using multiple screws. Let's take a look. See, beat rows, guard support installation. Ah, no, this acts more like a shelf. Hey, light, stop being weird. And then you would go like this and hold it up from underneath like like that yes i very much like that design so i am going to hook that up and we'll be right back for whatever is next because honestly after that dinner break i don't remember but we'll figure it out honestly it might be cpu cooler which that that'll be interesting i've never used an aio cooler before we're gonna find out All right, just a brief little show of my work. As you can see, I got 3080 mounted in here. I've got a bracket here to make sure that it's all nice and stable. And once I get the vertical mounting bracket, I will be using that. That's just gonna take a little bit of time because I didn't realize uh, back when I was ordering. Uh, whatever, it, what happened happened. It is how it is. Extra brackets in. And now I just need to hook up the power to it. And then next up, uh, let's see, I'm going in order of this, then next up is going to be the uh, hard drives. We're getting real close. I get the hard drives, that'll be the cooling. And that part will be pretty much done. Got the cables in, they are managed. Uh, they don't look nearly as good on the back end, but hey, you guys don't see the back end, so it looks pretty nice up front, I, mean, I do say so myself. So next up is gonna be the uh, internal disk drives, and I didn't realize how tiny they got. Like seriously, like the, this is two terabytes. These are both two terabyte SSDs. I, I did not expect them to be this tiny. All right, let's take a look at the installation, shall we? Uh, maybe? So tiny. All right, I got the 970 Evo Pluses because those had uh, very good ratings. And I wanted to get stuff that I was fairly confident would last. It lasts for a long time. After all, my other computer, my one, I have a hard disk drive in there, and that is, uh, that's for my original computer. It's like 500 gigs, and it's, it's old. I'm probably running a borrowed time with it, if I had to guess. Anyway, let's see. Installation guide. M.2 SSD connector type. Okay. Here we go. 2.5 inch for desktop computer. This is... What the heck is this? This is like migrating data information, which, you know, is nice, but... And it's on M2 SSD. 
Oh, really? So according to this, I plug this in on one end. And then I just lower it down and screw it in. Okay. Um, you know what? I'm going to lay this down on its side so that I don't, like, drop it or anything. So, this will, be, this will take a little bit of shuffling. And this is why it's important to take stock of everything that you can see with it before you actually start doing anything, because I'm pretty sure that all the slots to put those solid state drives in are under the graphics card. Some of you who knew that are probably like, bro, what are you doing? You're doing it wrong. You gotta put the things in first, and then you put the GPU in. Well, you know what? You're right. This is gonna take me a little bit to undo, and then I'll, I'll get those in, and then <laughs> we'll continue. We're getting there. I didn't expect to have this many delays. All right, guys, I finally figured out why this whole thing seemed a little off, and why the diagrams didn't entirely match up. So the things to, to hook up the uh, solid state drives are underneath these uh, like plastic and metal bits that are right in here. I don't know if you can see that or if this thing's in the way. Uh, you've probably seen it earlier anyway. And you were probably screaming at your screen, Tom, they're underneath those! You gotta unscrew them! Tom! So now I know that to hook in the SSDs, I have to take those off, take off a few things, Slot that in, put it together, and then it'll be good. And then I can put the GPU back in. The importance of reading instructions and knowing what you're doing. I'll learn how to do that one of these days. All those screws later, and now we are finally back in business. All the SSDs are in, graphics card is back in, I haven't got the one little uh, metal thing so that it looks nicer. At this point, I don't know if I actually feel like mounting it vertically. I think it's fine as is. Just because it's going to be a pain to set that up again. Plus, next up is my cooling system. That's the back of it. This. The Leon Lee Galahad AIO 360. to figure out how the heck this thing opens. Ah, oh, okay, here it is. Okay, there's a lot here. So we've got our fans, which... I thought these were supposed to be 120s. These kind of look like 140s, and that kind of makes me a little leery because not 120. I think because I know I specifically looked for the 120 fans. Well. We'll find out. It's been a while since I've seen computer fans up close. So let's see. We got a thing with like a tiny little amount of thermal paste. We got. I'm assuming that this is the pump, which is a bit bigger than I thought it would be. Yeah, I think I think it might actually just be my uh, lack of context. Now, these fans are all good and all. I actually got different fans. Still Leon Lee, but they went with the aesthetic that I was going for. So, what I. You may recall me mentioning that there is a. That the processor that I got gets really stinking hot. So, to combat this, I am delving into AIO cooling, which is different than just air cooling, which is what I had done before. This involves basically a mixture of both. There's a liquid that runs through these tubes, goes through this pump, and then the radiator cools it off. This one is noted for being very quiet, very efficient, 
and just overall great without being too overly expensive. Like competing with the top ones without being top price. Which I personally appreciate a lot. So I am going to find the instructions for hooking this thing up and then I'm going to get started on that. Oh, here they are. I am sorry to say, oh, oh. <laughs> sorry, I was looking at it. I forgot to flip the viewfinder all the way around. So I'm currently upside down. <laughs> That's not weird. It looks like there's a lot of steps to this, so I'm not going to show anything just so that I don't accidentally screw something up because there's also a lot of small parts. So you'll... I'll make sure to show the finished product, but right now it's, uh... You know, it's got stuff to do. I mean, I can get it. Just, oh boy. Alright, turning on again real quick because I just wanted to show... You'll see them again later when I put in just a bunch of them. But, Leon Lee SL120 fans. These are the things that I'm going to be using with the radiator. i got to have another three of them back here. And another three of them somewhere. I don't remember where else I was going to put them. But yeah. Oh, across the bottom. Which means I'm going to have to take those things off. Just now noticing. But I can do that, no problem. It, I will show more on these fans when it's time to actually install them. But these are also going on the radiator, so I'm going to get to that. It still looks complicated. So real quick, I just wanted to do a short update. First of all, I think I twisted my knee when I went to sit down to do one of these steps. So if it, I like look weird sitting down, that's why. Second, and more importantly, one of the reasons that I wanted to get these fans in particular is because they have this ability to essentially just snap together as long as they're, you know, orientated in the same way. Um, no, this is, this is it. Come on, come on. This, no, I'm supposed to go this way. There we go. And locked into place. Now I've got three fans that's all hooked up. They're all daisy chained together. Which also means that they'll also be sharing the same uh, commands for when I do the RGB. And you can see like these paler parts right here. This is where the RGB actually gonna, is going to be. So like I'm going for kind of like an angular sort of aesthetic. And I think it's going to look really good. So I'm going to be now setting these up. I'm going to be setting them in this orientation because... As I found out, this is set more as an exhaust sort of thing, and it's better because I'm going to be mounting the radiator to the top right about here. So it's going to be pulling air out and out the top. Uh, I've got some of the screws out, going to need more of them. Luckily, there's a lot of parts. I had that. This is honestly a lot more than I expected. I really wish I had somebody help me. Oh well. <laughs> We're getting there. So I just found out that this little bracket that you need to use for to uh, mount the uh, cooling, uh, the pump to it, it has to go under the motherboard. It has to go under the, under the motherboard. You know, like step two. Something that would have been very good to know back then. <laughs> Take it from me, if you go to build yourself a PC, I would highly suggest looking at the instructions for everything before you begin. It wasn't a problem when it was just air cooling. No, now I have to do AIO cooling because otherwise it gets way too hot. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, I thought that this was going to be relatively quick. Obviously, I was wrong. <sighs> All right. So, got the graphics card back in. We've got everything in. The 
the mounting things are on the processor. I know you can't really see it from there. I apologize. Here, let me... The next up is one of the biggest stress events in constructing a PC. Applying the thermal paste. So let me just get you guys a better view. You still can't see it from here. <laughs> Wonderful. Can you see from here? It's at the top of the RAM. It's just barely off. to do without being able to see my beautiful face for just a hot minute. Speaking of hot, I've got myself thermal paste, thermal grizzly from Cryonaut, because it seemed like it was quality. So, I need to apply the thermal paste to the top of the processor and then press This copper plate, cooling plate, whatever you want to call it, to that after I remove the plastic. This is kind of nerve wracking, not gonna lie. Because pretty much this is do or die. I know, I know, it, it's, it won't like ruin my rig if I put the thermal paste on wrong or need to reset it. I just don't feel like doing it again. I've already had to redo like a half dozen other steps. So I, I really just want to get this on the first time and not need to worry about it ever again. So what I think I'm going to want to do is hook this up directly down like this. Have these going up. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I might have a better idea, actually. If I... If I set it... To go in like this. It's got a lot more room on that side. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. This will go on like so, but obviously I need to do the things first. I put a twist tie up here because there's a couple of smaller wires that I do not want falling into this. To me, this feels like a delicate procedure and I need to ensure that I have as few things acting unexpectedly as possible. All right. So, here we go. The moment of truth. Let's see. All right. Cap off the thermal paste. All right, now I'm just going to... I like the uh, double parallel feature of it because that seems to almost ensure a good spread. All right, remove that plastic. I've got the uh, cap screws or bolts, I think, over on the side. All right. I want that thermal paste to get too like solidified or whatever could happen to it. All right. Directly over all of them. And apply some pressure as I take these and start to screw them in. got springs on them so 
you know, they got a little bit of a extra push or something to them. All right. You're applying some pressure as I continue to screw these bolts into place. Pardon me. And the last one in the back here. That's be the most awkward one to reach. But I got them. Got all of them, in fact. I don't want to like, press this around too much. Because see, one thing that's important, you don't want to overdo the thermal paste, because then that just becomes a mess. You don't want to do too little, or else you're not going to get that good heat spread. That's not... Uh, what did I do with the screwdriver? There it is. Alright, get those nice and tight. Tend to want to screw them on in a cross formation, like, you know, go X or like diagonal. That way you're semi-evenly distributing pressure. It's important for pretty much everything involving these computers. Uh. Bit, that way I can finish putting that on. And there, secured. Whew, all right. Get that back to the uh, proper angle. Back, we're gonna have that mess of wires down there. All right, that's done. Now it's on to further install this thing and then I get the fans in and then I will be mostly done with the hardware, I think. I don't know, it seems like every time I go to do something, there's like something else that pops up, so. It never ends. Hi, work in progress. It's like, Almost 11.30 at night. I've been at this for about eight hours. I did not think it was going to take this long. But I think that I have everything set. Oh, by the way, back, he back here, behind it, you know that part that I said I would remove later? I removed it. I have access to the back of the motherboard. I didn't need to take the whole thing off to put that bracket on for the cooler. Live and learn, hanging on the edge of insanity at this point. So yeah, got that. I think that next up is going to be putting in the rest of my fans. And honestly, I think at that point, I'll actually be done. I mean, I'll still like set up the monitors, install the operating system, all that. But I think once the fans are in, all the hardware is going to be in the machine. I didn't even realize how close I potentially was to being done. This is great. <laughs> this is genuinely great. Well, no sense in stopping now. So as far as I can tell, everything is set where it needs to go. So the next thing that I'm going to be doing is connecting in all of the rest of the fans that I got. I've got a total of nine of them. Three of them to replace the ones on the radiator just to make everything uniform. And then another six to go all around the rest of the way. Uh, so let's see. That's pulling through, I think. So. 
I need to figure out exactly which way goes which. Um, I know I showed it once before, but I'm going to show it once again. Let me just get the other ones unpackaged. So, what's special about these fans? The SL120s from Leon Lee is that you can, as it's called, daisy chain them. So like, yeah, take them, and hold on. I did this once, I can do it again. <laughs> oh, oh. There we go, see they connect, and then they slot together. If I'm not mistaken, you can daisy chain four of them together at a time on one single connection. Helps if they're all uh, synchronized in exactly which way they're pointing. And daisy chain. See? All three of them together in one single unit. So three of these are going to be going into the bottom, and another three are going to be going into the open space down here, which will be up on the side. So once I get these done, then I can pretty much just reassemble. Well, I have to get them plugged in first. They have their own unique little uh, uh, plug adapters. It's just to show. Connect via and then they just kind of slide and lock together like that. There. Now it's just a matter of attaching it exactly where you need it. And I'm going to go and do just that. We're in the home stretch. Soon enough I'll be able to plug it in and turn it on and see if it works. Looking forward to it. Did it. I think we did it. I think we did it. I think this computer is now fully built. I can't say whether it's operational or not. It's currently getting close to one in the morning. I got like all the wires hooked up back here. Everything's hooked in. I followed all the instructions. I went back and fixed what I didn't do right. That's just a matter of putting the case all back together. And then I just have to check and make sure that it all works. We're almost done. We're almost done. Now it's just putting on the last few parts. And of course, who could forget? The oh-so-satisfying removal of the plastic from glass, which I thought there was one of them. Hmm. I thought there was one on that side. Just start that. Just slide this on. Is this upside down? I think I have this upside down. No. I don't. Okay. There we go. Ah, uh, you know what? Let me put on the other panel first. We'll take all the plastic off at the same time. So plastic on the inside of here. that needs to be removed on the inside of this one. Oh, that is a... Uh... Oof, that is resi resisting hard. Oh, I digress. There is protective film on this one. That feels 
goes back to there. Huh. Alright, ready? Ready for the first one? Mmm. more satisfying than tearing the plastic off of fresh stuff like this. I tell you what. The most satisfying feeling. Pardon me, I'm going to be blocking your view of things for but a moment. Everything. And lastly, just secure everything into place. Stop going crooked. Boy, Joe would have a field day with half the stuff I'm saying trying to get this thing to cooperate. There we go. Okay. Now, are you ready for the satisfaction? Look at that plastic all coming off in one. Neat. Pull. Oops. And lastly is the plastic on the front of this case. And on the bell. Perfect. And now there is but one final thing left to do. Sure, you built the computer, but does it work? We're gonna find out. Heavy-duty. Pardon me just a moment. Ah, uh, this is gonna be a little bit awkward. Just to get to... Uh, your view might shake just a little bit. You're probably gonna top of my head. Alright. That's the wrong end. This end goes into the computer. Now this end, this end is the end that goes over here. Come on. All right, we're plugged in. I keep shaking you all around. A little bit more of a uh, eye level view.
can't do anything with it yet. Let's see if it works. Um, oh. <laughs> Lights flicker a little bit. I can't tell that any, anything that come on by itself. You know, it always helps if you uh, you know, turn the thing on. Here, let me. What a feeling. What a feeling. Of course, I'm not quite done there yet. I still have to install the OS, move everything over, all that. But hey, the computer's running. It works. I can feel the air coming out of it. I can hear it. it it's working. It's freaking working, guys. And soon enough, I'll be streaming with this thing. Fridays, 6 p.m. Eastern. So until next time, guys, grab yourself some cool drink, put your feet on relax, I'll meet you at the lounge. Maybe not, maybe I'll just be in my room playing on my new computer. <laughs>